Hello, peoples! Yeah, it's been several days since my last recording. Um, since I came back from the Sedona trip, I basically had to brainstorm on fixing several of my problems. Um, the number one is that crappy ass refrigerator. Uh, you know, I saw all these like mods and hacks and all those other BS to. You know, tear a hole in the side of your rig, mount all these computer fans in it, uh, put fans on the inside of the refrigerator, all battery-operated fans and stuff. And I says, you know what? I could probably do all that and it still wouldn't work right. The thing is over 20 years old. Uh, it's an absorption fridge. It's not, uh, it doesn't work unless it's two degrees or less level. Um, that sometimes is problematic. Like, if I'm parking in a friend's driveway, all my food's going to go bad. Even with the levelers in this driveway, I'm still several, I'm still like five degrees off, right? So I couldn't even run it in here without possible, uh, possibility of damaging it. So what did I do instead, you ask? Well, in the last several days, I brainstormed about a new plan to install this. Yes, it is a Dometic CFX 35. Uh, I have it set at 11 Fahrenheit right now. I, I have the, I do have some water in there. It's a, it's a Dometic, if I didn't mention that. I have some water in there right now, and here's our, here's my current temperatures. Uh, 11 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom of the. Uh, compartment and then 27 degrees in what they call the dairy compartment which is a little compartment up top basically what I'm trying to do is figure out how I can put stuff in here and have the bottom freeze and the top stuff not freeze so I would be able to actually use this as my complete refrigerator now I have this bungeed up right now because I do not have any way to pull this out across the bottom of course I got the bag if you're going to invest that this kind of money in the refrigerator, you may as well go ahead and get the bag too. It's another forty bucks, and it uh, helps significantly, especially in hot weather, to keep the inside cool. Therefore, runs a lot less power. Uh, I'm going to have to build a sliding tray for this, and that's that's on the agenda for tomorrow when the sliders come in from the Amazon. I got a pair of twenty-four inch sliders that will run across the sides and I'm gonna build a, uh, a platform for the refrigerator to sit on and slide out. And hopefully this couple of inches I have here will be enough room. Uh, even if it rubs a little bit on the top with the bag, that's not a big deal. Uh, and then when I'm traveling, I'll most likely bungee it like you see here, something similar to this, uh, so that it won't slide out because it is just gonna be on dresser drawer slides. and. Uh, I don't think it has any kind of locking or soft motion. I, I really won't know until I get it. The description was kind of vague. But uh, in any case, I'm going to want to bungee it anyway just for safety because you wouldn't want something like this which weighs like 40 pounds to come flying out and crash into other stuff. So yeah, I wound up replacing the refrigerator now. This is this is going to replace... this the, the space that this takes is going to replace one full bin of stuff. But on the other hand... Since I won't need the refrigerator for refrigeration, I'm just going to use it for dry goods. So I'm going to take all the stuff that I have up here right now, because I have, I don't have this full. I just have some tea and some uh, canned goods and stuff, my bathroom stuff. Basically what I could do now, instead of putting my bread and, and uh, my rice and all that stuff up in these cabinets, where it would be susceptible to, you know, 90 degree temperatures when I'm parked and not in the van, I put it in the Dometic, which is sealed. It stays like 20 degrees cooler than the air on the outside because it cools down at night and warms up during the day. But since it's got a, it's insulated, it actually will insulate it from the hottest part of the day. So I can put my dry goods in there and they'll stay fresher longer. Uh, so while I am losing some 
storage capacity inside the van. I'm also gaining some pretty good dry storage. And the thing is, I could still use that as a backup. Say something happens to, the, to my Dometic. Well, I can't say Dometic because they're both Dometic. Something happens to this. Or say I have overflow. Say there's some stuff that I really want refrigerated that won't fit in there. I could turn on the the uh, the OEM refrigerator. Use just the freezer compartment because the freezer compartment in, in this is not it's not huge, but it's a pretty good size. I could use this. To, this compartment here gets cold pretty fast, so I could throw some lunch meats or whatever in there have the rest of this all dry goods and I'm going to keep my water here that's that's such an excellent spot for this water container because the door's still closed it's in there nice and solid and that brings me to my next upgrade and you have to forgive my sinuses I just sneezed like 10 times it's allergy season here so I'm barely able to breathe uh, you know how I mentioned before that when I was in Sedona and it was hot, one of the things I hated the most was drinking that warm ass tap water. Well, I realize that probably most of the places I'm gonna go, it's gonna be pretty horrible tap water. Uh, unless I wanna start buying water to fill my jugs, which I can, but I, I really don't wanna have to go out of my way to special places like Ace Hardware uh, down the street here has uh, reverse osmosis water, which I think you pay like a buck or a buck and a quarter or something for five gallons. So I could fill up uh, both of my 10 gallon jugs for like 250. And then uh, I still have a couple of one gallon jugs. So I'd want to fill those up. And I think it's a little more expensive when you want to do just one gallon at a time. But in any case, it would cost me about three to four dollars plus gas to get to the special place to get the reverse osmosis water. And I said, that's kind of silly. When I can get water for free at most places, of course it's kind of crappy tap water with full chlorine and who knows what other chemicals. Why don't I invest in a really good filtering system? Now I didn't want to put a filtering system on the van's uh, pump. Like I don't want to filter everything that goes through here because it's toilet water, it's shower water, it's dishwashing water. I don't need that filter. That tap water for that's absolutely fine. <laughs> And even in an emergency, uh, I could drink the water out of the tank. It probably wouldn't kill me. Uh, but here's the thing. I, re I really enjoy clean, good-tasting water. Uh, I've had this diet soda thing going on for like 15, 20 years. Finally kicked it. And now I really, I really enjoy good water. And uh, the thing is, I don't like to pay one, two, three dollars for a bottle of water. Because uh, I drink a solid gallon of water a day. So what did I instead get? I did a lot of research online, uh, probably five or six hours of going through reviews and checking, uh, checking out competitors and this and that, this and that. Went to some specific water filtering websites and I decided to buy this Aquasana, I think they call it a clean water, clean water filter, clean water or something. Uh, again, I'll have to put the actual description and link to it down in the down in the description. But uh, I've used it once after I cleaned it out, and I'm telling you that water is awesome. I took that nasty uh, unfiltered tap water that was sitting for like a week in my refrigerator at room temperature. It smelled like a, a bad swimming pool, right? I put it in there. Basically, it's powered, so you gotta you gotta plug it in. You gotta plug it in the 110, which isn't a big deal. You plug it in, you pour water down this part, it fills up the center, it, it sucks it out the bottom, pours it on the outside of the pitcher. And yeah, this is a pitcher that just comes out, and then you can dump this into another container, which is, that's what I'm gonna do when that refrigerator container is gonna contain tap water. And then I'll pour that into here through this top thing, filter it, and I pour it into my one gallon pitchers, which I have a one gallon pitcher in there right now. Uh, that will allow me, and the filter, here's the thing. You know a lot of these home filtering Brita type things, they, uh, the filters are good for like 20 gallons, 40 gallons, something like that. I think this one's good for like 200 something gallons, like 250 gallons. 
uh, or is it 275? It might even be 275. I don't remember exactly. I know that basically I would get an entire year's worth of fresh water out of one filter, and that filter only costs 40 bucks. So basically 40 bucks for an entire year's worth of really good water. Now the filter in this is one of the very, very few that you can get that filters out uh, not only chlorine, but I think it takes out like 50% of fluorine or fluoride. And it also takes out like uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, heavy metals, and all this other crap, but leaves in uh, the good salts, like any salts that are in the water, uh, magnesium, uh, sodium, stuff like that, is still in the water. So it's very good tasting. Uh, this was not cheap. I think I paid, I paid somewhere around 100 20 or $130 on Amazon and it did come with the filter which is 40 bucks so if you think about it you paid about $80 for the unit now I'm t typically against units that require power for one and two have a pump because of course that's something that can break now this does have a one year warranty or it might even be a three year warranty I don't remember but it was a good warranty so if something happens I'll just return it and uh That'll be that. I can, this is a good, quick solution for really good water. It's compact, too. I mean, look at how much space that takes up. Now, I was going to put it up on the counter. Yes, I was going to put it up on the counter, but I lose about four inches of counter space, and I don't have that much to begin with. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to just bungee it. I'm going to put some uh, eye hooks in there on both sides, and I'm just going to put a bungee in there to hold it to the wall. And then it's never going to have water in it. Uh, as you see it now, it's empty. That's the way it's always going to be because I have all those sensitive electronics down here. The last thing in the world I want is for, you know, a half gallon of water to spill and then fry my electronics. So uh, I'll use it as I need it. Basically, you fill it up. I think it holds eight cups of water. Filter it. Pour it into a pitcher or pour it into a jug and then I put it back. And so it's always gonna be empty. I don't have to ever worry about it spilling. Now for my last upgrade that I had put in yesterday, uh, I'll show it to you and then I'll play a couple of seconds of, of music so that you can see what it sounds like. I finally, after three weeks of waiting, I got my Bluetooth amp. It's a Kettinger, I think is the brand name, but uh, it's just another Chinese. Um, Amazon FBA seller. Um, there was a couple of people who sell these. That was the only one that, uh, for whatever reason, I could buy it from. The other ones were like sold out or really expensive or whatever. But uh, I basically, you see these this LED light strip. I had to take this apart and disconnect those lights because basically they just constantly flash and basically it'll give you a seizure. So I disconnected those lights. Um, this thing works exceptionally well. It's a Bluetooth amp, so um, you can connect any any device to it via Bluetooth, and it acts like a Bluetooth speaker, a Bluetooth stereo. Um, it has an auxiliary input. You can see it has a uh, an SD, or they call it a TF card input, and then it has a USB, which is what I'm using right now. It also has a radio antenna. You can see the radio antenna there. And here's the hookups on the back if you're curious what the hookups look like. Um, basically just uh, regular speaker cables. It does run on 12 volts. And that was one of the reasons why I got it. It was because I can use a 12 volt. It does have a aux in. If you, um, you know, need an auxiliary input for any reason. Uh, which, you know, there's an aux in on the front too. I, I think they both connected the same. Now, yeah, I do have these wires just kind of dangling here. Um, I haven't had a chance to get my staple gun out. I'm going to staple all these, like, dangly cables and stuff. Uh, it's a low priority. But let me show you. I went to my storage space, and I got my old bookshelf speakers that I used to use on my PC, and I brought them in here, not realizing how freaking huge they are. So, take a look. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so here we go. I have my uh, 
Put my thermometer back here for the hot water here. I have my uh, furnace controls. I got all my remotes and stuff. And this big honking speaker. And I put the other big honking speaker right over here behind the TV. Now, you're probably wondering, this, this is a really strange place to mount these speakers. But look how wide they are. They're almost as wide as the entire uh, top shelf here. And I really didn't have... I had a choice. I could either buy more speakers. I mean, these weren't cheap speakers. I think these were a hundred bucks of hair. Um, and they're two-way. I like two-way speakers. I don't like those one mid-range speaker that has, like, no bass. There's, like, no trouble. It's just, it's really bad, right? These sound great. Um, even with this little amp, which is, I think it's only 20 watts RMS per side, uh, it pushes these speakers really nice. Uh, the Bluetooth works great, except for my laptop. I can't get the laptop Bluetooth to work with this. It syncs with my phone. It syncs with my Fire tablet. Um, I can play Bluetooth music through that. Um, I found out it's probably going to be easier for me when I just want to rock out to just use the USB. I do have this uh, this green cable here, auxiliary, that I use to plug into the auxiliary jack. Then I plug it into the auxiliary on the laptop. So that's how, if I want to play uh, sound from the laptop, I've just been using the auxiliary jack. Kind of pisses me off, but uh, I'll probably figure out the Bluetooth problem eventually. I just, I'm in a kind of a rush because I'm getting kicked out of here in, on Saturday, and today's Wednesday. So I have, uh, I have something to do outside on the back that I'm going to show you next. And then uh, tomorrow I need to build the thing for the refrigerator, the slide. Because without that slide, I can't get in and out. I can't get to the, into this refrigerator. It's it's too heavy to like. Oh, and I'm going to take this handle off. I already took the back one off. I'm going to take the front one off just for for more room. But uh, without the slide, I can't get in there to get anything. So I, I really need that slide. And I'm going to build that tomorrow. Friday is going to be packing day, so uh, basically I put the PC back in, uh, put the uh, stuff in the cargo container. Uh, I got to bring the cat stuff out here because the cat's going with me. I'm going to be I'm going to spend an entire week in Thumb Butte in uh, Prescott, so that's where we're going to go. I don't know if I'll spend the whole week there, but that's where I'm going to start. So anyway, uh, I think that's all the updates for the last couple of days, and. What I'm going to do next is see these giant ass inch and a quarter thick posts. Well, they were for my. Uh, I got these uh, basically their their mounts for chairs, so you can hang chairs off the back. Well, I didn't realize when I when I asked them for I went to a hardware store. I asked them for one inch galvanized pipe. Apparently, in the world of galvanized pipe. They count the inside diameter, not the outside diameter. So the pipes that I got mounted right now are way too big for the um, plastic holder things that I'm mounting on it. So I went to the hardware store again today. I mean, this is such a time waster, but yeah, I went to the hardware store again today. And I got these. So what I'm going to do right now is take the old pipes off. I don't know what I'm going to do with them put the new pipes on, then I'm going to put the chair thing, I don't know what they're called, the chair mounts on the pipes, and then I'm going to put the chairs on them, lock them up, and then we should be good to go. Uh, that's what I need to do right now, and after that, I need to look at my list and see what else I can do. I do need to, one of the big things on my list, and it's really not necessary for this trip, but I would like to get it done is uh, you see all this all this wire all this wiring here this is stuff that I hub you know I, I basically hob together on site in Sedona when my 12 volt system stopped working what I need to do is replace all this I need to get rid of this really crappy um, really cheap speaker cable because it, it pulls apart too easily so I need to, I need to take this apart and I'm going to use this wire here, which is what I use to run. See, this is what I use to run coming out of the wall. 
basically re replace all the red and black wire with this, which is much heavier duty, uh, thicker, much better uh, support. For, so if it gets a little bit of a yank on it, which I think is what happened, it won't separate. So that's something I need to do. That won't take very long. Uh, I do need to staple up those wires so I don't wind up ripping them out by accident. I don't know what else is on the list. So in any case, that's a, this has become a very long video. It's probably like 20 minutes, 25 minutes at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it here and get to work on the chair mount. So until next time. Oh, hey. <laughs> I forgot to demo the stereo. Let me put you right up here in between the speakers. And I'm only going to play this for less than five seconds because I do not want to get flagged on YouTube as a copyright infringer. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Ernie.